Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Money Bear Podcast. I'm your host, Chloe Daniels, better known as Chloe Bear, money coach on the internet. And if I sound a little weird, it's because I have been battling a cold since I got back from FinCon. And I tell you what, getting this cold is so frustrating because I literally just started feeling better after having COVID in July. And then I go to FinCon and I get sick again. So I'm a little frustrated, guys. <laughs> um, but anyway, this is the Money Bear Podcast where we talk about all things money. And this week, we're actually going to do something a little bit different. And this is inspired by Two Hot Takes, which is a podcast that I am totally obsessed with, where they essentially go in and they look at Reddit stories and they give their takes on the Reddit stories. Now, most of them are like regarding relationships and things like that. And I thought, you know what? I think it would be kind of cool to do this about money specifically and read you the stories from Reddit and then give you my take on them. So that's what we're going to try out this week. Um, you know, since we're, the whole episode will be about money tips and things along those lines. We're not going to worry about a money tip this week because there will be many, money tips throughout. So I'm going to get started. And before we do, be sure to rate, review, and subscribe to the Money Bear podcast. It helps us out a ton. Uh, honestly, your guys' reviews make my day and it reminds me that I have to keep going. Like it is so important, the work that we are doing. And I love hearing from you guys. So if that is something that you care to do, I would love to see your feedback and it takes about two seconds to do. So appreciate you guys, but let's get to it. All right, friends, let's get to it. So the first one I've got is an am I the asshole episode. So am I the asshole for telling my boyfriend I want our joint savings account to be named after me only even though we both contribute equally because I'm afraid he'll lose the money again? So from this person who posted, first of all, I'm sorry for any misspellings. Second, I'm sorry if some of my terminology is wrong. I'm trying to be a part of my boyfriend's financial decisions, but I'm still learning. Yes, the title is bad, but it's the truth. My boyfriend is a Bitcoin day trader. He can make in a day what I make in two weeks, but he can lose the same amount in an hour. We used to have a joint savings account, but one day he gambled everything on some sure investment and lost the entire account, plus a lot of his own money. He said one of the coin makers lied to him and stole the money from everyone. That money was supposed to go to the first payment on a house and moving expenses, but it was all gone because of a scam. It took me a lot of time to accept what happened. I'm still not sure what I would have done if he hadn't given me my money back. We're still planning on buying a house together, but now I demand to be the only one that can control that money. He told me I'm a control freak, that I don't believe in him or his businesses, and that I'm pissed that he makes more money than me. Except I don't. I literally have a stable income and benefits from my job. He told me that he will become a millionaire and buy himself every house he wants because now he makes the coins himself and he is afraid I'm going to leave him and take his money. I told him that if we break up, I'll open the savings account and split it down the middle so we get both get what we paid for. I love him, but I don't trust him with my money. I feel like I'm dating a gambler. Is it wrong for me to be this controlling? He makes me feel stupid for not understanding his work, but maybe I'm just financially illiterate. I don't know. Thoughts? Okay, guys. <laughs> this, like, I, I had all the self-control when she said he's a Bitcoin day trader. Uh, by not, I didn't make a comment when she said that, but Oh my goodness, it's such a big red flag. Um, the thing is, you guys know that I am a lazy investor, which means that I do not try to time the market. I'm invested in the stock market and I am not you know, trying to time the market, which means you're trying to wait when prices go down to buy and then you sell when prices are high. I just stay invested so I get the benefits of things when things are high and I'm always buying. So I get the benefit of buying both when things are high and when things are low. So things are pretty smooth sailing for me. And that is not only a more effective way of investing, but it's also a way that just reduces stress and reduces risk. This, I don't know how old the poster is. Um, she seems like she might be a little bit young, but not 
respecting your income, your money, his own money, and deciding to take those kind of risks to me is a huge red flag. And it sounds like he's getting super defensive when you do try to talk about this. And I mean, to answer your question, she asked, am I the asshole? And no, I don't think you're the asshole at all. In fact, I think you probably need to run <laughs> because financial incompatibility is not a good thing when it comes to a relationship. And it can work out if you have the same goals and the same values and you guys are able to figure out a system that works for you. Um, I like that you are trying to, you know, have one joint account where you guys have the shared expenses coming out of, and then you keep your own. Thank God you didn't just completely combine your finances. Cause if you had completely combined your finances, can you imagine what could have happened? He could have like taken all of your money on this. And the thing is, is that scam didn't teach him a lesson. He's still trying to continue doing what he's doing. And it sounds like he's not being really reasonable or understanding about why you're no longer feeling confident in his ability to manage the joint account. This is like not even about all of your money. It's just about the joint account. And so if you cannot trust your partner to safely manage and respect the joint account, I'm just not sure I would see a future unless they were willing to work on it. And based off of his comments about you being a control freak and his comments about, you know, I'll be a millionaire someday and buy all the houses. Well, first of all, sir, a millionaire is not going to allow you to buy all the houses unless you live in my hometown. But that kind of defensive response to me is a bigger red flag than even the financial infidelity that he's committing. So if it were me, I certainly would not be buying a house with this person. It's sh this person and you clearly have different risk preferences and different priorities and different um, thoughts around how you should be using the money. So I would say be very careful before you proceed. Uh, you'll want to make sure that you're getting into a relationship with somebody who has the same values and goals as you do. And that those goals, even if they're different goals, that they're compatible. And if his idea of financial security is gambling away your money, that's not going to change anytime soon. So you would think a lot of people when they have something happen, like losing all of their money to a scam, which is really common in the Bitcoin industry, that's usually something that's enough to wake them up. But it sounds like that is not the case for your boyfriend. So proceed with caption. Now, there are updates to the story, so I want to read the update. Uh, update. I bumped him. He tried to explain to me that he stopped gambling on crypto and he started a company with some people to scam other crypto investors. Oh, my God. <laughs> Apparently, he can create meme coins and scam people for their money. I recorded everything while he showed me some graphs. I'm not sure what the police can do with it, but I'm going to find out. Holy crap. You guys, this is my first time reading it. I like read like a gist of it when I was like collecting stories for this episode. Holy crap. So not only is he not like financially competent, he also is unethical. He's like a bad person who is trying to literally scam people out of money. So what I would say to the listener, if you happen to hear this, which, you know, probably you won't, but... You need to report this to uh, the federal, there's an entire branch that allows you, of the federal government that allows you to report online scams. I would report this. Uh, it sounds like she reported it to the police uh, and hopefully the police will point you in the right direction for reporting online scams. But oh my gosh, you do not want to tie your boat to this sinking ship. So wow, that really took a turn that I was not expecting. Um, and at the end she said, you were right, Reddit, he's a piece of shit. Uh, that's, I literally, I don't even have words. Um, her, she had a few other updates. So update two, I talked to his mom and told her everything. She said he gave her a lot of money recently after she and her husband saved him from bankruptcy just four months ago. I didn't know about the bankruptcy. I had no idea, but I tried to explain to her that he is a scammer. She is cutting any financial A's and ties to him and her husband, my ex stepdad. What? kicked him off of the family. Wait, what? So she was dating her. How does that work? <laughs> so I know this is not part of the story. Her boyfriend 
is his mom uh, is married to her ex stepdad. This is some small town shit, guys. Holy crap, that's wild. <laughs> um, okay. Anyway, she continued, she's cutting any financial aid ties to him and her husband, my ex stepdad, kicked him off the family vacation that was supposed to happen in October. They are well off family, but having a scammer son can destroy their reputation. Easy to say he's in a lot of trouble now. Then she goes on to answer some questions. Question, why did you have a joint finances? A, her answer, I don't have a supportive family and I couldn't get a rental contract and then a loan by myself. We both had stable jobs and had similar expectations of life. Okay, good. Um, I get that. I, I think like the safest way when you're cohabitating with somebody and you are combining your finances is to have that joint account, but to keep separate accounts for exactly things like this. I mean, this happens more often than not, uh, or no, no, it, sorry. It doesn't happen more often than not. I, I took NyQuil last night, guys. So my brain's not fully functioning, but, um, the fact that like, he's first of all, okay with scamming people, but having a joint account and then having a separate account for your own money is so important because this stuff happens all of the time. It happens more often than we think it does. So protect yourself by making sure that you have your own money if shit hits the ceiling, which in this case it did. Again, thank God she didn't have all of her money combined with him because she'd probably be done with that as well. If this man is willing to create an entire business and company to scam people, which again, guys, this should really highlight the crypto world. There is a lot of scams in the crypto world, which is why I'm not a huge fan of it. And I only invest what I'm willing to lose in large Bitcoin, in large cryptocurrencies. I'm not going to be buying any meme coins probably ever. So holy cow. Um, another question was what coin did my ex create? I'm not going to mention it. So I don't accidentally dock my ex and then myself. That's fair enough. Did you report him? Yes, I reported him to the FBI. She didn't get a response. I reported him to Twitter. Didn't get a response and his account is still live. I reported him to the coin exchange. Got a thank you email and assurance of an investigation. That's really good. I mean, you know what? She's done her work and she's, you know, done what she can. And more importantly, she got out of that relationship. So, wow, what a what a way to start the, the Reddit conversation. But it's just, I, like I said, I think it really highlights just how scammy the Bitcoin industry, the cryptocurrency industry can be. And you just really need to be careful. And that's why I only invest in large coins that have been around for a really long time. And I also only invest what I'm willing to lose. So, okay, let's get to the next post. Okay. Am I the asshole for fighting my parents over money? I, 21 female, am the oldest of three, but I am also the only daughter. My parents started teaching me house chores at around age nine, which was basically giving me a broom and telling me to sweep without telling me how or to do the dishes without teaching me. Ever since then, I've been doing the majority of the household chores. I thought they'd start teaching my brothers too once they became nine or 10, but nope, just me because I had the audacity to be born without a wiener in the Middle East, comma, my bad. <laughs> I don't know why I said comma. House chores are not the main problem. It's the time I have to spend on them, especially cooking. My brothers, 19 male and 11 male, simply eat, sleep, play video games, and hang out with their friends when they don't have school. I even have to actively clean after then, or my dad will start a fight with me over being lazy and the house being a mess. In 2019, I finished high school and I signed up for uni. I was okay with whatever major I could get without a tuition. Yes, some majors and colleges are free where I live, but my mom insisted on me being close and not going to another city and she would pay tuition $800 a year. I was uncomfortable with the idea since I knew how they would act around money, but I agreed because I knew they wouldn't let me go to university otherwise. The first year uh, was paid off by my grandma since she gives every grandkid a sum of money for university, their wedding, university or their wedding. The second year my mom started saving up, I got a social media management job, which say, paid $100 a month and I planned to spend it on my expenses, clothing, food, etc. since I didn't want to ask them for money. But even before I gave my permission, my parents said they'd keep it for me. Around five months later, I was supposed to have $500 saved up, but when I checked, it was $120. I asked about it, and they said they paid half of my tuition with it. In the end, the money went back to me. 
I was pissed and I told them I wouldn't keep my money with them anymore and that they originally told me they would be paying my tuition. If they didn't, I wouldn't have gotten a major that requires tuition to begin with. It turned into a fight. My parents and everyone in the family flipped on me, calling me ungrateful and disobedient. Even my brat of a brother joined them. Now, if they needed money, I would have been okay with it. They said they need money while spending $300 on a new phone for my brother, getting the youngest a $250 smart TV, getting family and friends expensive gifts, etc. I quit the job after a year. I thought if I can't use my money, why work for it? Last year, my brother got accepted to a university that cost double my tuition, $1,600 to be exact, with a $200 monthly allowance since he's studying in another city. I've been boiling my resentment towards them for the blatant favoritism based on gender. When I later vented about it to my cousin, she also told me I was an asshole for being ungrateful. Oh my gosh, I feel so bad for this person. This is like the blatant favoritism and... She said that she's in the Middle East and that makes everything a lot more complicated because, you know, different societies value different things. And I don't really want to speak on that because that's not really my space. Um, but that absolutely is unfair. You are not an asshole for being frustrated with how you are being mistreated by your family and how favoritism is uh, going on the way that it was. And like you said, had you entered into this agreement, knowing that they would be taking away your money from your, you know, the job that you're earning money from, you would have made a different decision. And that just seems really manipulative. Um, now I get it. It could have just been a lapse in communication, but it sounds like communication in your family is not a strong suit. Um, what I would say in the future is if you do ever enter into an agreement with your family that involves money that you get very, very, very clear on the parameters and, you know, in an ideal situation, getting that in writing would probably be better. But again, I don't know how things work where you are at. So I don't even know if that's a possibility or if that would be, you know, culturally unaccepted, at least here in the United States, I know, you know, getting a contract for something wouldn't be completely bizarre. Uh, it probably would still be something unique, but if you've been screwed over by your family before, you got to find ways that you can protect yourself in any aspect. But honestly, if I were you, I would have done what you did as well and said, I'm going to make my own money or, and I'm not going to give it to you guys. Um, honestly though, I would probably still be working and keeping that money for yourself. Uh, because you're eventually going to need to move out and you're eventually going to need to start your own journey towards independence from your family. It sounds like you're not going to get fair treatment while you are there with them. I would wonder if you would be able to change majors maybe to, you know, get that free tuition and then continue to make money at your job so that you're getting that work experience and you're setting yourself up for a positive future and a higher, uh, higher income. So, do not focus on, do not let your family ruin your future by not working is what I would say. The fact that you're willing to work while also going to university is going to help you get a job that's hopefully at a higher rate of pay than what your, you know, your competition may be getting paid at. And it's just going to help you get better offers. So I would say look into whether or not you can transfer into a tuition or into a degree that requires no tuition or not. Um, if that's not an option, keep doing what you're doing, but maybe try to keep that money in a separate account or, you know, maybe consider, um, I'm trying to think of what I was going to say. I mean, if she can't move her degree to another degree, she's kind of stuck in the situation that she's in. And if your parents are going to take your money from your job to pay for tuition. I mean, at least them paying half of it is still a benefit to you. Yes, the favoritism is absolute bullshit and not fair, but it's still going to set you up for a better financial future if you are working and you are saving some of that income. So I'm so sorry that this is happening to you. That is so not fair. Um, but in the future, any financial contract that you get into with them, see if there's things that you can do to protect yourself, whether that is, you know, getting a contract in place. Um, but it just, it's terrible because you're so young and you were basically manipulated into staying home and with the promise of going to school for free and being able to pick whatever major you could, but they kind of flipped the script on you. So 
I'm very sorry to hear that that's happening to you, OP. But if you're 21 now, you're just a few short years away from financial freedom. So getting that job, even if you're, even if half of it is getting taken away by your parents, being able to save that and potentially even invest that money for your future is going to help you out a lot. So I wouldn't say no to that job. It's just another thing that's going to help you escape your situation that you're currently in. All right, next story. Am I the asshole for shutting down my wife's 23 female idea to save money by living in a cow barn? I can't wait to read this one. I, 24 male, and my wife haven't been or haven't had the best of times for the past couple of years, and money is tight. I'm having to work basically a minimum wage service job until something opens up in my industry, and she doesn't make much either. Usually food and rent is taking up most of our money each month, and since we want to start a family and have kids soon, we want to have some savings. She recently told me that according to her best friend's friend, there's a farmer with a large 20 to 30 minutes, or there's a large, there's a, I can't read guys. There's a farmer with a large farm 20 to 30 minutes away who will let acquaintances live in the stalls in the cow and pig barns for next to nothing as long as you help with stall cleanings in the morning before leaving or for work. I have to read that again. They'll let you live in the stalls in the cow and pig barns. What? <laughs> Is that legal? Okay. <laughs> oh, well, next sentence is not sure if it's even legal to rent those out, but she seems sort of enthusiastic about the idea. From what she's heard, there's adequate space, Wi-Fi, the barns are climate controlled. There's only three to four other people who have taken him up on it, trying to save money and he can vouch for their good character. So it wouldn't be a bunch of sketchy people there. Of course, there's a few hundred animal companions, but I don't suppose those would steal our stuff either. I thought she was joking at first because she kept bringing it up, saying she's calculated how much we'd save, how we could just put an air mattress on the floor, we could get a gym membership to shower, we spend most of our time out of the house anyway, so why are we paying rent, etc. I shut it all down and said, no way am I ever living in a cow barn or a pig stall. She seems sort of offended that I wouldn't even consider it, saying it's partially my fault for losing my better paying job, and this would be an easy way to make up for lost financial ground. I said that there's just some sort of repul something repul repulsive about the idea, and I didn't think it would work out. She's never been to a farm or both suburbanites. Does she even know what she's asking for? And then she said, well, you've never been either, so you don't know either. You're sort of being closed-minded. Am I the asshole for not taking her suggestion seriously? She wants me to at least look more into it, but somehow I can't bring myself into. No, I don't think you're the asshole at all. Now, I have to give your, uh, I can't believe, girlfriend or wife. Yes, wife. I want to compliment your wife for thinking outside of the box. I think that's awesome. But I, so with some context and transparency here, I am no longer a super frugal person. So would I ever do this? Absolutely not. But what I would say, which I think will make the original poster OP and the wife happy, is try it out for a week. See if you can take like a vacation there or see if you can work there for a week or live there for a week, pay whatever it is, do like a trial period and see if it's something that your wife still wants to do after a week. That way you're showing her you're taking it seriously and you're trying it out. But I'm going to guess that after you guys do that for a week, you're probably not going to want to do it. Now, instead, what I would say, um, obviously, assuming that that doesn't work out and you guys don't end up actually wanting to do that, I would say work together to come up with a plan to get yourselves out of the situation. It, This desire of hers just goes to show you how desperate she is to get out of the situation you guys are in. And so I think you coming to her and saying, we need to make a plan to get out of this. I'm not willing to live in a barn but I'm willing to do whatever it takes beyond that. Besides that, like here are my boundaries. My boundaries, I will not live in a barn, but you guys are young. Maybe living with parents or living with a family member or living with roommates might be a better option. That is showing that you're listening to her concerns and you are understanding the fact that she is so stressed about money that she's literally willing to live in a barn. 
but it's showing that you're taking initiative to solve the actual problem. Do I think living in a barn is going to solve the option, the, the situation? No. But what about living with family? What about living with friends? What about living with a couple of roommates to really lower your costs? You guys are young, 24 years old. It is still very much socially acceptable to be living with your family, to be living with roommates. I mean, it's socially acceptable in other countries well into your 30s until, you know, you do start having kids. So if it were me, I would say, I hear you. I hear that. I love the fact that you want to get us out of this situation. So I don't think that I can live in a barn, but here's what I think we can do and really come together as a team to figure out what you can do. Is living in a barn the solution? Probably not. Probably not. Uh, <laughs> again, I would say to, to kind of take that idea out of her head, I would just try it for a week. Um, but coming together as a team to figure out, okay, this is enough. We do not want to be in this situation anymore. And here's a plan to get us out of this situation. So I don't think you have to go to the extremes of living in a barn. But again, that's pretty impressive that she's that willing to do that. And, you know, from your post, I feel like you seem like a sweet person who is like just kind of blown away of like, what? My wife wants to live in a barn? You got to identify the root reason as to why she's asking that. It's because she's so desperate. She does not want to keep living in the same way that you guys are living. She does not see any other options. So together, maybe you guys can explore some other options. So for me, I... I'm a big fan of go out and earn more money. And I know that's super simplified, but start looking, start updating your resume, maybe hire a resume writer, maybe hire a career coach to literally get you to a place where you are earning way more than minimum wage, because there's only so much you can do making minimum wage. I don't know your background. I don't know what you studied, but I am sure there are ways for you to make more money than what you're currently making. So that would be what I would focus on. And then looking at ways to lower or eliminate my housing costs while you're going through this transition phase. So I would also put starting a family down the road like several years because you need to focus on that financial stability first. You guys are young. You have so much time to start a family. So if you can, maybe put that on a lower priority so that you can Get yourselves an emergency fund, get yourself saving for retirement, get yourself saving for that baby that you do eventually want to have. So I hope that helps, but good luck to you. That was an adorable, adorable uh, post. <laughs> okay, we've got one more for you and I'm so excited. I feel like this is really fun. If you guys like this format, let me know by leaving me a review or slipping into my DMs on Instagram. You can find me at either the Money Bear, same, same name as the show, or you can find me at Clover Money Coach. That's my much larger platform. So we have a final one and I can't wait to share this with you. Okay. Am I the asshole for bringing my sister-in-law's wallet to the restaurant when she conveniently always forgets it? My female 28 sister-in-law, Amy, female 26, always comes to visit from out of town. She stays with us instead of a hotel and always wants to go to expensive restaurants. She always conveniently forgets her wallet or domes, domes up, domes up. Is that like a saying? Domes up with some excuses as, oh, I'm assuming that's supposed to be comes up, comes up with some excuses as to why she can't pay her share. She has implied that since I make much more money than her, I should be the one to pay. No, not my husband should pay, but me specifically. I do make a fair amount of money, but not so much that I can treat someone every time they come into town. Nonetheless, in the past, I have just paid the bill and asked her to pay me back. She never has. She had made a reservation at an extremely expensive restaurant last night, and before we left, I made it clear that I wouldn't be paying her bill. This is where I might be the asshole, and I'll admit I got this move straight from the episode of Two and a Half Men, as we were leaving, her and my husband went to the car. I pretended I forgot something and went back inside. I found her wallet sitting right on top of her suitcase. I put it in my purse and we went to the restaurant. When we were done eating, I asked for separate bills. She said, no, we need one bill because she forgot her wallet again. I reached in my purse and said, this wallet? She was extremely furious. She said that I should have not touched or grabbed her wallet. So... Am I the asshole for taking her wallet and bringing it to the restaurant? 
Oh my gosh. Okay. I am going to say, no, you're not the asshole. Like the way that she is taking advantage of you is clear and really incredibly rude. So I had a really similar situation. Um, in well, there's been a couple of times in my life. Um, now I want to start in saying I am a really generous person. I like paying for people. I like doing that on my own terms, but when somebody expects it, I'm immediately turned off by that. And it's really not something that I now enjoy doing. Like I, like if you expect it, I just don't enjoy it as much because to me, that's just I don't know. There's just something icky about it. Like I am not responsible for paying for other people. I like doing it because I like doing it and I like being generous with the wealth that I do have. So I was out to lunch with somebody that I hadn't met for the first time and it wasn't too long ago, but they had picked the restaurant. They had done all the like planning and things like that. And we met kind of like halfway in between each other. And the first thing I did is I bought their coffee because it was like, you know, why not? It's easy. We're ordering coffee at the same time. You know, I was appreciative of them coming out to meet me and yada, yada, yada. Then they picked the restaurant that we decided to eat at and they proceeded to order a couple of cocktails. And this is lunch on a Sunday. And they ordered a bunch of cocktails. They ordered a, a, a normal dish, but the restaurant was relatively expensive for like a brunch on a casual Sunday. Uh, and so I just had one drink, a Michelada and or a Michelada. And I was kind of just like chilling. And suddenly the, at the end of the, not suddenly, at the end of the dinner, the check came and I immediately grab my card from my wallet and place it into the, uh, into the bill. And the person like did this weird thing where they didn't even pretend to like grab their wallet. They just like adjusted their shirt. And then when I put the card down, they said, thank you. And I was like, what? wait, what? Why am I paying for lunch? Like, why is this my responsibility to pay for your lunch? And it wasn't the fact like I was planning on paying anyway, but the fact that they expected it rather than offering to split it to me was so rude and so entitled. And it was just like, I thought we were friends. I thought we were going to like, like develop a friendship. But to me, if somebody just immediately expects me to pay, that doesn't seem very friendly. <laughs> it doesn't seem like an equal partnership. Again, had it been on my own accord, I would have happily paid. But the fact that they just assumed that I was responsible for their lunch for some reason really sat with me in a negative way. So, and I, and not now I don't want to hang out with this person because it's just left such a bad taste in my mouth. Um, and of course me being the nice person that I am, I was like, yeah, of course I'll pay. Like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say anything to this person, but I'm probably not going to hang out with them again. So I just think that the expectation is really crap. And this situation is truly ridiculous. And if anything, it's your sister-in-law. So I'm assuming it doesn't say like who, if it's her, like, let's see here. Maybe it's her husband's sister. I'm not sure. It shouldn't be you talking to the sister-in-law. It should be the person who is related, whether it's like your sibling who is married to them or whether it's your husband's sister. It should be the relative talking to her about how inappropriate that is. We pay on our own accord. We don't pay just because it's expected. And the fact that there was a conversation beforehand and this person conveniently forgot their wallet again, that's just, it's so rude. And on top of it, she made the reservation. She picked an extremely expensive restaurant. Like the level of entitlement, like it's like the princess syndrome to me. Ah, that's terrible. But anyway, there are edits on this. So I want to look at it. Um... She said, Amy just called me. She saw this post and she yelled at me for bad mouthing her on the internet. Honestly, I don't care. Amy, hopefully reading all these comments is a wake up call for you. So let's look at the comments. Looking at the very top pop comment that has over 50,000 upvotes. Not the asshole, but you totally should have flipped the switch, left your wallet at home and only brought your license. So she had to cover the whole bill and then never have taken her out to a restaurant again. I love how petty that is. <laughs> I mean, truly, she's the one who picked the restaurant. She should be paying. Uh, the person responded. They said, wish I had thought of that. Uh, the other most top like rated comment is stop going out to eat with her. Just stop. 
What's wrong with your husband that he allows his sister to take advantage of his wife? That is your real problem. You are not the asshole. And honestly, I agree. It is our responsibility to manage our families. It is not our responsibility to manage our sisters-in-laws or, or relatives-in-law. That's, ah, that makes me so angry on behalf. Uh, somebody else said, right, I was wondering why her husband hasn't put a stop to it yet. It's just so disrespectful to be passive aggressive about her income and try to manipulate the person into covering her bill. Is the husband just socially unaware or is he just glad that he's not the target of the sister-in-law's toxicity? Either way, he needs to grow a backbone. I completely agree. And then somebody else said, not the asshole. Leeches should be taught a lesson and your sister-in-law for sure deserved it. I just wonder where is your husband in this and why is he allowing his sister to behave like this and didn't nip this behavior the moment you realize what she was doing. The other thing, the other comment says by bitter conflict, she made the reservation and invited you. Etiquette says that she should be responsible for a hundred percent of the bill. Oh my gosh. I love it. I love that everyone voted that she's not the asshole. And you know what? I think that her showing up with her wallet was just like a very, very like actually sneakily, sneaky way to do it. And I think it was maybe a little bit petty, but like also sometimes I support pettiness when people are behaving in a way that is just completely ridiculous. So I support it and I don't think you're the asshole OP. So Anyway, that's those are all the stories I have for you guys today. If you guys enjoyed this, if you thought this was kind of fun to switch things up and do a little bit of Reddit every once in a while, let me know and I will continue doing these. I had fun. I like reading these and seeing what the heck is going on in our world because holy crap. Um, so I'll plan to do like one of these a month. Uh, and if you run into any Reddit threads or Facebook threads or anything where people are asking advice on the internet in a public way, let me know and I'll cover it on this show. So that's what I got going on for you guys today. Now, friendly reminder, nothing that we're talking about is intended to be financial advice. This is my opinion and for educational purposes only. Uh, if you're looking for advice on your own to talking to a financial professional. Now, if you are listening to this and you're like, Chloe, how do I get my money right? Well, I got you covered. Grab the Get Your Money Right guide for free down in the show notes. It's at thelazyinvestors.com. Sorry, thelazyinvestorscourse.com slash guide. It's a free 30-page guide, and I have filled it with all the frequently asked questions that I get on the internet. So what kind of budget should I use? What are your favorite finance apps? What are the resources you use to get started? What's your story? All of those things are in that free guide. So be sure to grab that. So if you made it this far, be sure to rate, review, and subscribe. It means the world to us. And yeah, I think that's all I got for you guys this time. So thank you so much for stopping by and giving us a listen. And I hope you enjoyed this. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.